The Lord opened my lips. My mouth will declare your praise. The whole creation has been groaning, as in pains of childbirth, right up to the present time. Groaning is going on. We hear it. I'm a homeowner, and as a homeowner, my house preaches. It preaches to me. I have a water heater that breaks. I have a roof that leaks. I have shing shingles that fade. And I have doors that creak and crack when you open it. My house is preaching to me, and the message that it preaches is, it needs help. It needs care. My car preaches to me as well. It preaches a message that my tires need to be changed. Oil filters that need to be replaced. And the one place where there used to be paint, there's now rust. It's preaching a message as well. It needs care. It needs help. So too the creation in which you live. It's preaching to you, and the message is loud. It's groaning. It's groaning in pains. We hear the groans from Pilger after a tornado ravages the town. And the groans are loud. We hear it from Blair after hail falls from the sky, battering and hurting. Groans are coming. They still come from New Orleans after Katrina battered the coast. And the groans rise even louder. Groans and pains. They're real. And they're here. They're where you live. Why do these things happen? The creation was subject to frustration. Not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it. Frustration. Frustrated. Groans and moans. Not supposed to be this way. This is not the way God created the heavens and the earth. Everything was perfect. The Garden of Eden, perfection, paradise. God placed his children in the beauty of the garden. He gave them warnings. He said, watch out. If you eat the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden, groans are coming. You will surely die. Pain and suffering will be here. Adam and Eve shrugged off God's warning. They shrugged off his word. They ate the fruit of the tree. And groans and pains are here. For them and their children and their children's children. For you and me, suffering and pain. Your body preaches to you. Your body preaches to you as well. And it's preaching a message. You have bones that ache. You have arthritis in your joints. You have hair that turns gray. You have knees that crick and cringe as you walk or bend. And a lower back that has pain. And your body's preaching to you. And it preaches a message. You need help. You need saving. You need rescue. You need rescue. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat of it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food. From dust you are, to dust you shall return. The groans of original sin are echoing even today. Pain and suffering is here. Pain and suffering is here. The preaching of the law many times isn't met with happy ears. It's usually met with groans and moans. But it's absolutely necessary. It's absolutely necessary for you and me that we need help. We need saving. We need rescue. The outside world would mock. They would ridicule. And they'd say, where's your God? Where's your God in the midst of your suffering, your difficulties, your hardship? Where is he? Does he care about you? Can he do anything to save you? I consider that our present suffering is not worth comparing with the future glory that will be revealed in you. Present suffering, real, but not worth comparing with the glory that is to come. In the midst of the suffering in this world, Jesus comes. And his glory leaks out. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to men on whom Jesus favor rests. Jesus comes to a people who suffer, who hurt, who go through pain. And he's here. And your groans have a direction. Your groans go somewhere. And they go into the ears of Jesus. Hearing groans and moans from his people. Mary and Martha were groaning. They were groaning and complaining to Jesus about something really serious. Their brother Lazarus died. 
And they came to Jesus and said, Jesus, if you would have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. They're complaining. And Jesus answers their complaint. Did I not tell you that if you believe, you would see the glory of God? Take the stone away. Then Jesus looked up to heaven and prayed, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know that you always hear me. But I prayed this on the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. Jesus looked up to heaven and called out, Lazarus, come out. Come forth from the grave. Lazarus, get out. I'm going to take your place. You come out of the place of death, and I'm going to enter. I'm going to enter the grave for you, Lazarus. Oh, and for you. I'm going to go to the place of suffering. I'm going to go to the place of hurt. And I'm going to take it. I'm going to take all your pain, all your suffering, all your hurt, and I'm going to take it into my body. And Jesus prays, and he prays in another garden, the Garden of Gethsemane. And it's full of agony. It's full of sweat and blood. My soul is overwhelmed with the point of death. My Father, if it's possible, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, thy will be done. God's will? You want to know what God's will for you is? <clears throat> Giving you his only son. Giving you his one and only son into death for all your groans. For all your pain. For all your suffering. For all your hurt. Jesus takes it. He takes it into himself. And while Jesus is on the cross, he cries out a victory cry. It's finished. It's done. Your salvation is complete in Jesus Christ from beginning to end. It's done. And Jesus' body is taken down from the cross and it's placed into a tomb to take Lazarus' place and take your place. He stays there for three days. And three days later, Jesus gloriously rises from the dead, breaks the chains of death. Life is reigning in Jesus Christ our Lord right now. In Him. He rises from the dead. And he ascends into heaven. And he ascends into heaven not to be in a place where he closes up his ears and locks them up to groaning. But rather he draws near to his children. He comes to you with his gifts. His gifts that overflow in abundance. Yesterday the Lord was pouring his gifts on little Mason. Little Mason who needed lots of help. Needed lots of care. Mom and dad brought their child to where Jesus brings his help. And he washed Mason clean. And God made promises to Mason in the baptismal waters. Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. What flows in here is life, salvation, forgiveness of sins. And God placed in the little Mason the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. The Comforter comforts you when you groan. When you are groaning, the Holy Spirit is here bringing you Jesus. Because that's the Holy Spirit's job, is to bring you Jesus over and over again. To bring you comfort. Jesus is making all things new. There's a new heaven and a new earth. The old order of things has passed away. The new has come. The new has come. And he rejoices over Jerusalem. He takes delight in his people. And the sound of weeping and crying will be heard no more. That's the second coming of Jesus. At the second coming, no more groaning. No more crying. No more pain. It all goes away. And we still groan. We still hurt. And our groans are directed toward Jesus. He comes to save. He comes to comfort. In 2010, the groans were almost reaching a deafening pitch in Chile. In Chile, miners went off to do work. They went off to labor for their family, for their community, to bring energy and power to the people. They went off into the mines almost a mile deep beneath the earth. And as these men went off to work one day, the mine shaft collapsed. And they were trapped deep beneath the earth, buried in the tomb. Hope was very small. Those on the surface worked diligently. They brought their resources. They brought their tools. They brought their energy. They sacrificed their time. They dug deep and they provided holes to give air for them to breathe. They gave them water to drink. And for 70 days, these men did not see the sun rise or set. I saw the sun rise this morning, and I didn't even give thanks to God. 
These men, when they were brought forth from the mine, 70 days later, rejoiced in seeing the sun again. They were reunited with their families. They were brought back together. And there was deliverance. Groaning was gone. Celebration was there. They were called forth from the tomb not to return. And same too with you. You're called forth from the grave. The Lord did that for Mason, and he does it for you in the fault. And you have new life. The new life is lived in Jesus Christ. And groans still come. And when your groans come, direct them towards Jesus. He takes them, he sponges them up, and he fills you with life. For I am the resurrection of life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. And Jesus' question to Mary and Martha was, do you believe it? Do you believe what I've done, I've done for you? And Mary and Martha say, Amen. Thanks be to God, He pours His gifts into us today. And He takes your groans, and He turns them into glory. The resurrection of your body. All for the name and for the sake of Jesus. Amen. Rejoice in our Lord's gifts. Rejoicing in the Lord's comfort. We groan. And our groans are called prayer. And we lift up our prayers and our petitions to God. God's people stand for a word of prayer.